you rather exactly learn that lesson now on your first date than six years down the track when you go, oh my God, I should have seen all the signs. <laughs> Three reasons why it is high value for a woman to offer to pay on the first date. This is going to be controversial. Very controversial, in fact. But not actually as controver controversial as you think. No, but, <laughs> um, you know, after having a, a Facebook group for a while um, and seeing the, some of the conversations that um, occur in that Facebook group and how um, a lot of women believe that, oh, the man, not only should the man pay for everything 100%, but also um, it's not masculine to not, oh, it's, it's, it's feminine to receive, it's masculine to give so that a man should pay for everything. Yep. As if it's a rule that applies to every single man. Mm. And I think that's a little ridiculous, don't you think? Well, the whole idea that um, the feminine strictly receives and the masculine gives, that's... We should, we should really make another video on that. Um, okay. Because that is completely, like, what? <laughs> Who comes up with this kind of crap? Um, it completely destroys, bastardizes the original meaning mm. um, placed on the, this framework. And by the way, it is a, it's just a framework. Don't get too addicted to thinking that being feminine is everything. It's not. Um, it's, it's only one piece of the puzzle when you look at the whole game, look at the whole picture. And it's a great, it's a very useful framework to look at a certain... Um, uh, certain set of problems, for example, if you if you're in a relationship for a long time and and that passion isn't there, it's easy to to understand that problem and create a solution from this particular framework. However, it isn't the be all end all. Absolutely not. And some women really get addicted to coming across as feminine, and they 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 organise their life and their behaviour and everything they do in the dating world around the idea of being feminine. And <laughs> if 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 it is if it's masculine to give and feminine to receive, then that would make me super feminine, especially when the postman comes, because I always receive. You're so feminine. I am. Yeah. I know. You open the door for the postman. <laughs> I open the door exactly. <laughs> Gosh. So yeah, we we should really address that at some point. What you doing? You want to? Do you want to cuddle? Oh, Isaac, can you go upstairs? Do you need us? We're working right now. Yeah, we're working right now. <laughs> Don't forget to close the doors, eh? Okay, good boy. You were saying about... Uh, okay, I was um, saying... We'll, we'll address the whole feminine masculine thing um, because it's a very useful frame, framework for specific problems, but we don't want women to get over-invested in something that's really quite pointless in the wrong context. So this video isn't going to be a, a video that's going to tell you that you should pay and that's high value. We're not saying you should pay or you shouldn't pay. The whole premise is that you should offer to pay. And there are three good reasons why. For yourself, not for the man. And not so you can lose a part of yourself or not so that you can lose the respect of a man because you're being so manly and masculine by offering to pay. No but for other very good reasons that will actually help you in the long run. Very smart reasons, I should add. Um, at the end of the day, um, you're spending your time with someone. Um, On and day. that's already some level of investment. Your time is perhaps the most precious thing we all have. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so to offer to pay, and I'll get to these three reasons very shortly, but but the ability to offer to pay is so powerful because especially in this day and age where there are so many women who just expect to receive. It'll, um, you'll stand out amongst all the other women, not as someone who will just go out to take and expecting to take. Um, I know there are a whole range, uh, there, there is... Um, Our youngest son is playing hide and seek with us. Boom. Let us deal with that. <laughs> okay, where were we? Um, let's get on with the three reasons. How's that? Yeah. I think we should. Okay. So, again, disclaimer. We're not saying that you should pay. Not at all. No. We're saying that you should offer to pay, and there are three good reasons why. So, so take these into consideration, 
That's not gonna make you masculine to offer to pay, not at all, okay? In fact, that goes right into reason number one. It shows that you're not there to take value. There's so many women out there, and uh, men talk about this quite a lot, um, that they, um, they want you to take them out so that they don't have to pay for the meal and they have a free meal. <laughs> I mean, think about, think about it from a man's perspective. How would that make you feel? You've just been used. Yeah. taken advantage of yeah it's not very nice yeah so it it's a gesture to say hey look i'm not here to just waste your time and your money that i'm actually you know i'm here i'm spending my time you know i, I value these interactions yeah <clears throat> and by the way even if a man's super rich um it's still going to feel bad to be in the presence of a woman who's just there to take Unless you're the kind of man who wants to take advantage of that woman's desperation, I don't know. Yeah. Really. Unless you're there to take advantage, unless you're the, willing to take advantage of her attachment to taking from you. So this isn't about finding the wealthiest man so it won't mean anything to throw over a couple hundred dollars for a lavish meal um, because most of those men will still have the feeling of being used and just bleh, after spending time. It's about, te well, when you first um, get to know someone. It's the emotional quality of the interaction that we're looking at and analyzing. Yeah, we're, all, we're, always, we're always testing each other. We're, yes. we're sussing out who the other person is. Yeah. And one part of that process is seeing how generous they are with their resources, with their energy, with their emotions, with their, um, with their money as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not suggesting that you go and, let's say, have a first date at a top-end restaurant, spend $300, and, no, and then you, you, you put it on yourself to fork that bill. Not at all. Absolutely in not. In fact, uh, it's, it's a much better idea, and we sort of talk a lot about um, this. I talked about it in, in, in one of my courses, that it's much better to have micro-dates that escalate rather than having a big grand first date oh, when you don't even know the other person exactly why don't you just go for a cup of coffee why don't you go walk around the park um these are such better ideas that and uh that there's not a whole lot of pressure just on little those moments of bonding yeah exactly stress-free without that burden of the interview style yeah you don't want it to be an interview dates. exactly so what do you do how much do you earn uh -huh. yeah so 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 when we say it's um, high value for you to offer to pay. What we have in mind is a simple coffee date or a cup of tea date. Look, a coffee, look, a coffee and a scone that would cost you less than ten dollars. Your time is worth so much more than ten dollars. Okay, so it's not the money here. And in fact, um, if if you offer to pay and the man was really really happy for you to take the bill then at least you've learned something about him. At least you've learned that, oh, you know, he didn't really step up and do anything. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to let that one go. I don't know. You know, yeah. it's, it's information here. You learn something. And, it's, and you rather learn that thing when you have that coffee date than six years down the track. Yeah. So what are, we, what are we aiming to learn here, though? You learn that maybe, oh, he wasn't nearly as generous as I thought he would be. Yeah. Or and that he's we, probably not into me. Or yeah, or maybe he's not that interested. Mm. Or that he's just, you know, he's, he's not as generous as I wish he was. Or, or that, uh, you know, it, it's a test. It's mm. a test. It's a test to see where he stands and what he believes in and, and how much he's able to um, bring to the table in terms of his energy and resources. Yes. And this is all coming from a man who, um, much to my dismay at certain points throughout our relationship, would always treat our friends first and second. <laughs> but you're, you're, a, you're a generous person, so this perspective is not coming from a guy who wouldn't pay. It's coming from a guy who's, you're very... I, I would always pay, and that's yeah. me being smart. But there's because, a reason behind that. Because I want to figure out, I mean, if I'm spending time with anyone, a friend, family, friends, whatever, I want to know where that relationship is going towards. Yeah. I want to know that we're investing into that relationship. Yeah. And yes. that is worth a lot more to me than the, 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 some dollars, some dollar bills that I spend on the meal or, or whatever it is. So it's like an, a tool of elimination. 
Yes. Tool of quick elimination. Yeah. Of the wrong kinds of men. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You rather exactly learn that lesson now on your first date than six years down the track when you go, oh my God, I should have seen all the signs. Okay. Um, should we get into the three reasons why? Well, yeah. we're just talking about number one. So oh, really? It just shows that you, you're not taking value. <laughs> it shows that you are generous. You're not taking value. Yeah. I think that's quite, quite important. Um, and a man who is happy to let you take the bill, I don't know, maybe you want to think twice. Because here's the thing, if I were to be single and I were to be on a date of any magnitude, um, and if a woman offered to pay, like, no, nah, gosh, no, don't be stupid, right? That's, that's that what I would That would be your think. reaction. That, that's my reaction. If I'm already there spending my energy, what's the money worth? Not, not that much. Mm. Um, so if he, like, I can't imagine any decent man out there mm. who wouldn't take that responsibility of paying the bill mm. away from you and, and, and keep it for himself. Mm. Um, anyone who's able to afford the bill, which is usually <laughs> a cup of coffee, not that much. Yeah. And someone who's at least, re at least has some respect for your time and energy. Yeah. Yeah. I mm -hmm. don't see any man not fighting for the bill. Mm. I mean, I, I've had, a coffee date with obviously not a date but someone who I expected myself to pay for from the start because I knew he was cheap but he was a childhood friend and um, surprisingly when I offered to pay he's like oh no I should get this he got up and yeah. he did it and I was floored honestly I thought I honestly <laughs> thought that could never happen um, so it's almost like giving an opportunity for yeah. the man to do something yeah, yeah. Instead of creating this awkward situation mm. where, you know, no one knows what to do about the bill, mm. it's, it's unspoken, mm. you, bring it, you bring that conversation to the surface. Yeah, that's right. Um, by adding value first, by, by leading first. Yes, and also by leading in that way, you inspire him to do more of that for it, exactly. you. Exactly. Because... Um, but no, leading is masculine. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, reason number two. Um, here's the thing. Smart men and men with resources, men with money, don't really care about the money. It's not about the money. It's never about the money. They rather spend their time um, with a woman of integrity and self-respect and worth. Mm. All those things. Okay? So they're not, they're not going to be worried about the money so much. We should, should we say hardworking men with because what about money the, the men who have had just money so they've, late, they've never had to work for money daddy, okay. daddy has the money or mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. um, do you think this is like an umbrella thing for all wealthy men or do you think yeah I don't, I don't think they would worry about the money yeah okay still interesting yeah. yeah so they would rather see you with substance with with passion for something, all these other things than, than your ability to, to pay. Yeah. Um, and the real smart men will want to know that you are generous as well. Mm. Yeah. That you, you can be generous and being generous with money is just, um, is in the same um, realm as being generous with your emotions, I guess. Yeah, or with time. absolutely. Um, and it leaves it leaves a lasting impression upon that person. I always remember um, certain friends that we've had or I've had in the past by how they act when it comes to time to pay the bill. And yeah, it's it, interesting. Yeah, it does. Isn't it? Like it shows their character the, a lot. Yeah, yeah, especially the ones who may have invited you out for <laughs> dinner. And then when it comes to the bill, they run away to the toilet. That's weird. Exactly. I'll never forget that one. <laughs> I don't think we've had dinner again. <laughs> no. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if, we're gonna, if we are to invest in a relationship, we want to figure out, test quickly, whether that is a relationship we want to invest in. Yes. And that's why I think it's a smart idea for you to offer to pay. That is another test. Something small. That is another test. Yeah. Exactly. Which, is, which leads to our third point, third reason. It is a test to find out his intent. Yes. It's, a, it's a quick way to figure out who he is 
mm. without having to spend the second date, third date, fourth date, mm. and so on and so on. Mm. I think uh, a big part of your job as a woman is to weed out the wrong types of men. Yep. The men who are not generous, the men who don't value connecting or don't yep. value your time, to, they don't respect your your energy and, and your um, your efforts. Yeah. I think we need to weed those men out. Because as, as you were saying to me once before, you'd think that instinctively most men who are genuine about connecting with a woman would want to take the bill. They do, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely mm. they do. And if they don't, then you know you, you learn something yeah. and you don't go down that road which would cost you not only years of your life sometimes but also a lot of dollars a lot of emotions yeah um and the opportunity cost of not meeting someone else because you're down that rabbit hole spending your time with someone who shouldn't have been worth your time in the first place mm. yeah absolutely so i think it's a very i mean i know People watching this right now, they'll be commenting, oh my God, I would never pay on the first day. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. Mm. And uh, obviously they probably wouldn't have made it through the video, but hear me out. If you can lead with your best foot forward, be generous first, you will find out so much more about the men around you than if you just waited, leaned back and- uh, And create a good impression upon the real quality men. Who yeah. are genuine about you. Absolutely. Mm. Um, there's like, I, I just imagine myself on a date and the woman's being passive, which is not feminine, by the way. <laughs> we'll talk about that another day. Um, being passive and, and waiting for the man to pay the bill. It would just, it, it just feels bad. Mm. Like she's not making an effort whatsoever. It is always going to be mm. a topic. Mm. It is always going to be something. Um, you might as well bring it up to the surface, offer to pay, and, and see where it goes from there. Mm. Um, instead of just let that awkwardness continue on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the, the kinds of women who would vehemently reject what we're suggesting are probably the kinds of women who are happy to go out and get their free meal and get their free ticket to the movies, to, um, to a concert, to, to, I don't know, high society, to meet, to upgrade, to meet other kinds of men. That's all fine, you know, that, that's another strategy. Um, this strategy will not resonate with them, but they will definitely experience a different kind of quality in their life, a different emotional quality in their interactions, and that that stuff it's just all transactional it's, it's exactly yeah i mean i'm fine with that as as i've said before in the past women can do what they want and yeah, people not, have different strategies we're not here to um, tell you what to do but th you're going to attract a very different type of connection yeah. and different type of men yeah. by you know by the little actions that you take along the way yeah um yeah some men would want to use money as a token of okay they can buy your affection with money yeah of course and that that's great for him until you you know you run out of money and then you know they run out of any kind of uh, attention yes so you, if you really truly want a good connection a, a deep connection um if you really want love then I suggest you, you go out there and, and you, you test people's intent. You, you figure out who they are and you lead with value first mm. rather than trying to stick with all these rules that are completely BS mm. that someone made up in their basement <laughs> just, just, just to, um, I guess, guide you down, uh, down a, a road, down, down some sort of fairy tale that, that's not true or not based in reality. Mm. I do have a question for you. Yes. Do you think there are some men out there who would find it uncomfortable if a woman paid? And if so, oh, sorry, if a woman off offered to pay? And if so, then what, how should she offer to pay? Is there a particular I, I don't way or method or just like... Obviously, we're not suggesting you to go 
up to the cashier and he gets his wallet out and you go, nah, I'm paying. Yeah, That's no, not we're, what we're, we're saying. We're not asking you to fight to get the bill. We're saying you offer first. Um, I don't... I don't believe men would feel uncomfortable just by the act of offering to pay. I don't believe that. Yeah. Um, because you're putting your good intent forward. Mm. It's, not a, it's not a bad thing at all. As long as you have the good intent, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so I don't think that, that would be an issue. Mm. Um, if it happened to me, I'd go, oh my God, that's... I'm so generous, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know? um, yeah, I, I, I don't believe that. Regardless, I think it's a good thing to do. It, 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 you, you put the best foot forward and uh, you learn a lot about the man that you're with. Mm. Um, and the only thing you could possibly lose is your $5 on a, a coffee and a scone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unconventional advice. I know. Unconventional suggestion, I say. Exactly, exactly. Um, and also I would suggest just, just worry less about what you should or shouldn't do. Mm. Um, when you've been single for a long time, you, you sort of get yourself attached to all sorts of ideas. Ideas that may seem good at the time, ideas mm. that may seem new and novel so that you think, Oh yeah, that, that's what it is. Mm. That's the answer. Mm. Um, let me tell you right now, it's not. <laughs> yeah. um, none of those shiny objects are the answers. What really matters is your attunement and how much value you can bring to the table. That's it. And we talk about value all the time. Well, this offer is just one piece of that value. It's not the whole thing. It's only like tiny, tiny little piece. But it's still value that you're offering. You're adding and, and not extracting. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of women have this perspective that, just going off what you've just said, um, have this perspective that if you have standards for other people, then that makes you high value. If you have standards for men and how they should be, that ma that's what makes you high value. And if you expect them to pay, then you're holding yourself to a higher value <laughs> because you're expecting them to pay for your presence, for you gracing them with your presence. And I get where they're coming from because a lot of women have trouble with valuing themselves less and when you go through the dating world for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years having no boundaries and feeling less than and not standing up for yourself and not having the kinds of men in your life that would make you feel valued and cherished then of course you'll swing the pendulum the other way and you'll say well no it's time for me to value myself it's time for you to pay for me. I get that. I 100% get that. But that's just resentment flowing into entitlement. That's not value. Yeah. and It's, it's definitely not value for the relationship where there's two people, not just one. Yeah. When you swing the pendulum, you know, you're going to go the other, the other side and it's not going to be attuned or calibrated whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and it's okay that they get there. It's okay that in some way they've swung the pendulum and gone, well, f*** this, I've had enough. Because they need to feel, you need to feel that mm. in order to kind of rebalance. But just know that just by going to that end is not going to get you what your heart wants truly deep down. Yeah, I guess the, at the end of the day, add value to yourself, have value to bring to the table. Exactly. That is going to ultimately make you a higher value woman. Mm. Nothing else will. No playing games, no trying to pretend to be someone else that you're not. Mm. It's just about the value that you have inside. That's it. Mm. And the value that you're able to create within the interaction yeah. between you and the man, that's value right mm. there. Not anything else. Mm. Okay, I don't care how much jewelry, how, how nice your makeup is, or how, how good your Botox doctor is, technician, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. So I hope that made sense. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of interesting comments Hate. below. So uh, join the conversation. Comment below. Let us know what you think. Um, of course. Of course. Um, not everyone's going to agree and that's okay. That's completely okay. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're just here to tell you, okay, 
What is the smart thing? What is the, the thing that's going to offer the most value? And so therefore you're going to, well, we always tell people, the more value you put out to the world, the more value that's going to come back to you multiplied. And how true, I mean, just go out there and test it out. You, you're going to, to see how true that is. And once you have a taste of it, mm. you wouldn't want to go back mm. because it is so limiting, so small to try and extract value, little bits of mm. value here mm. and there whilst burning bridges along the way. Mm. That, that sucks. That's a, that's a silly way of going through life. It's so much easier and you sleep so much better if you're able to add value and, and keep those bridges open. And, and, and Be proud of who you are. Exactly. exactly. And, and feel proud of your decisions. I mean, I know a long time ago, I, I grew up with um, a mother who was somewhat stingy um, with certain people and I grew up thinking it was okay to give secondhand presents to people and that... That, that I'd be getting better under the deal if I went into the cupboard that had presents given to me from two years ago that I didn't value, so I'd give them off to someone else. Thankfully, you came into my life and made me understand that that's completely... Did I do that? Ridiculous. Really? Oh, you were one of the catalysts okay. for me to realise that. <laughs> and so I started practising being generous with the people in my life, buying something that I knew they would like and value. And it gave me a sense of euphoria that I had never experienced before. Like, I was able to give a gift and walk away with the pride of knowing that I, I actually valued them and valued myself enough to put energy, effort, time and money into buying a good gift. And I'm proud of the gift I gave. And I get to keep that. Awesome. They always say that what you give, you get to keep. What you fail to give, you lose forever. That's great. <laughs> that's a, no, that's a good story. Yeah. We can make that the quote of the day. What you give, you get to keep, and what you fail to give, you lose forever. And having been on both sides of that, I know it's true. I've experienced it. Because what you fail to give, even in an emotional sense, like with our kids, mm. with anyone, what you walk away refusing to open your heart and connect with and give and explore and understand and appreciate, you walk away with that sense of closure of having given nothing and you hold that closure within you. It's, 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 like, it, it's like not allowing yourself to be infinite kind of way. It's yeah. In a way, yeah. It just doesn't allow you to cultivate the value within yourself that exactly. you otherwise could. All right. All right. I think that's all from <laughs> us. Um, let's throw a shameless plug at the end. What should we plug for? There's so many things going. Um, if you haven't attended my high value banter class, yes, I highly suggest you do. I was going to mention that before. Yeah. Um, this is another quick way. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. It's another quick way. I was going to say before, another quick way to weed out the low quality men fast. Yeah, absolutely. This is the purpose of high value banter for online dating. Yeah, and also you can carry that to real life dating as well, um, real life situations. So the the purpose of banter is to establish that connection and, and to test the other person to see who they truly are because the last thing you want when you meet someone, when you're dating someone, is to have this facade and they have this facade and, and you talk about a bunch of mindless stuff that doesn't mean anything to anyone. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the best way to establish that deeper connection is to be the, your real selves. Mm. So a banter is a way to bypass all those other layers that we tend to have, especially with strangers and people that we've just met, and, and really establish some, some connection and some, some attraction in those interactions, mm. but also little tests, that they act as little tests to see who they truly are deep down inside. Yes. So you haven't, if you haven't attended the High Value Banter class, I highly suggest you do it's so. It's a free class. Highvaluebanter.com, link will be down below. Check it out. Um, I think you'll love it. I think you will love it. A lot of women have and, and used it with success. Even 70 plus year old women. That, yes, <laughs> it's true. I had a 71 year old lady who joined my high value profile banter class. Uh, this is the paid version and uh, she absolutely, absolutely loved it and warmed my heart. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful story. It, it made my day. But there's, a, there's, a video on day. It. there's a video yeah. on my YouTube channel about it. You can go check it out. Anyhow, that is all for us rambling on. 
Thank you for listening and thank you for tuning in as always. Um, we will see you next time. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye for now.